Nath rules don't just appear out of nowhere. You can't be just wandering around in the 13th century and all of a sudden, boom, the Pythagorean theorem appears and suddenly everyone starts using it. Real people way back then have created different definitions and postulates for math. The person I'll be focusing on is Leonardo of Pisa, and he's best known for his name Fibonacci. As suspected, he created the Fibonacci sequence. Leonardo of Pisa was born around 1175 AD to a merchant. He traveled a lot and traded extensively, and learned about Arabic mathematics when he went to North Africa with his father. When he went back to Europe, he wanted to help spread his knowledge of math throughout the country, seen as math was pretty important for the trading industry. In 1202, Fibonacci wrote a book called Liber Abici, also called the Book of Calculations. In this book, he promoted the use of the Hindu-Arabic system, which was a lot more effective than the Roman system, which is what Europeans have been using at that time. However, because of the time period, which was the Crusaders against Islam, people didn't bother to use the system because anything Arabic was considered suspicious. Eventually, in the 15th century, people started pertaining more common sense and the Roman system was basically thrown out. Fibonacci, of course, was best known for his investigation of a number sequence later called the Fibonacci sequence. While writing his book of calculations, he discovered a pattern when trying to solve a hypothetical problem involving rabbits. After the first mate, the parent's offspring would mate and then produce more offspring. Fibonacci found out that after every month, the bunny pairs combined would equal the sum of the two pairs before. He then developed the so-called Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence kind of goes like this. You start with 0, then you add a 1. The next number would be 0 plus 1, which is 1. Then you would do 1 plus 1 equals 2, 2 plus 1 equals 3, 3 plus 2 equals 5, and so on. The Fibonacci sequence also developed into something called the Golden Ratio in the 1750s. The ratio of each term in the Fibonacci sequence to the previous term is approximately 1.618. This was later called the Golden Ratio. It was symbolized by the Greek letter Phi. The Golden Ratio has a lot of unique properties, and it shows up in a lot of things you see today. The Golden Rectangle was used a lot during the Renaissance period by artists like Leonardo da Vinci, and the golden spiral was formed by a cluster of golden rectangles together. Both of these are used in art, which has been widely called the rule of thirds, and have been said to be aesthetically pleasing to the eye. The spiral can also be seen in nature, such as shells, flowers, horns, and even galaxies. Leonardo of Pisa really put a lot of effort in his book, and somehow used his interest in math to develop something a lot more. 